All right, so really quickly looking at um, these functions here. So we're looking at periodic functions again. We've got one, two, and three. So we'll go one, two, three. We're stating the amplitude, the period, the max, min, and the equation of the axis for each. Oh boy. All right. So, got a little crooked lines there, but that's okay. All right. So, first, I think it's actually easiest if we start at the bottom here. The equation of the axis is always a y value, so we have y equals zero for the first one. Um, for the second one, we're looking in the middle. It's always where I could draw a dotted line through and the equation's going to revolve around that. So here we have y equals 3. And then this last one, we're going down to negative 4 and up to positive 2. So then that means right in the middle is going to be that. So we have y equals negative 1. Our minimums, again, pretty easy to look at. The smallest value it goes to. It's again a y value, so negative 2, 2, and negative 4. Maximum, the highest value it goes to. We've got 2, uh, 4, and what do we got? 2. Um, the period, so find a starting point. Find that similar point on the graph. Okay, it can't be this point for the first one. It can't be that middle point at 3 because it's going up here, down here, up here. So it has to be where it's going back up this point right here so that means the period is 6 for the second one I'm just going to go from bottom to bottom so the period is 180 and for the third one let's go from top to top so we have 450 minus 90 is 360 I think that's in degrees yep and then our amplitude for the first one is just Two um, from the equation of the axis to the top I'm doing. So I'm going from 0 to 2, from 2 to 3, and then from negative 1 to 2. Okay, so I just work from bottom to top there. All right. Now, when we're looking at this, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go through all of these values. We're going to kind of do a little bit of work here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra slide in. I just want to show you... Um, a quick so thing that we have to learn. Oh boy. So, let's just, uh, uh, whatever. so first, what we're going to look at is if we were to look at our unit circle. So a unit circle, the reason we use that is because we make this 1, 0. This we make 0, 1 negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Okay, so we've made a circle that's all one unit radius, which is perfect because it then the radius here has to be one unit. Okay, now all of our trig ratios and everything we found with our special triangles and everything is based around this unit circle. But a lot of people get confused when we're at any of these values at 0, pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, or 2 pi, or if you go back to degrees, 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. So what we need to remember is that our sine values are always opposite over, so sine theta, oops, sine theta is equal to y over 1, which means we can say that sine of our angle is equal to the y value of our ratio. Whatever point, so whatever point this is, let's say this was, I don't know, um, 0.7 and 0.6. Well, what that would mean is that sine theta 
equals 0.6. Okay, it's always equal to the y value of what you're looking at. So, we're just going to get rid of that. I'm going to do cos theta. Cos theta is always adjacent over hypotenuse. So, cos theta is always equal to the x value of what you're at. In that last example, cos theta would have been equal to 0.6. Okay, it's always the x value. So at these special points, all we're looking at is if it's cos, we're looking at the x's. If it's y, we're looking at the sine. All right. So what I'm going to do quickly is we're just going to run through all of these. So 30 is pi by 6. We're going to change all of these to radians. Pi by 3 pi by 2. Okay, I want you to get used to using radians. Now we're going to go back to 3, but we're going to be at 2 pi by 3. And then we're at 5 pi by 6 pi, 7 pi by 6, 4 pi by 3, 3 pi, whoop, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 3, 11 pi by 6, and 2 pi. Okay, we want to get used to talking in radians and not degrees. Okay, radians make, as you saw with our arc angle formula, make everything just a little bit easier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to draw the special triangles on the bottom. Quickly, and I'm just going to do the pi by 3, pi by 6 triangle. Oops. Okay. The reason I'm only using that is because we don't have any 45 degree angles here, so we're not really looking at any 45s. Okay, so if we're using sine, sine at 0 is equal to 0, because remember it's the x value. So then our decimal is also equal to zero. So when we look at our decimal there, we get zero, or if we were to look at our exact value, we get zero. So the next one, so sine of pi by six, one over two, point five. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. Um, and then we've got root three over two, and then one. Then root 3 over 2, because we're in the second quadrant, still have a related acute angle of pi by um, 6, or sorry, pi by 3, and 1 half, and then 0. Okay, now if you were going through this, what you would be doing is you'd be solving for sine x equals all of these values. Okay, so you want to find out when x is equal to all of these values. And all you're doing is finding your related acute angle and then you're finding which quadrant it is in. So sine in this one, we're in quadrant two, so seven, or sorry, quadrant three, seven pi by six is in quadrant three, so that means it's negative, and it's pi by six, so that means sine is equal to root three over two. Okay, then we've got, oh, it's not negative root three over two, it's negative one half. Then it's negative root three over two, because we're still in that quadrant, negative one, negative root 3 over 2, because we're now we're in quadrant 4, negative a half, and 0. And you should have noticed a little pattern there, that it's actually all the same thing. Um, so then we've got 0 0.8, we'll call it 8, 7, um, 1, 0 0.87, 0 0.5, 0, negative 0.5, and you'd notice you'd get all of these numbers if you put them in your calculator. And it's just getting a little busy here, but there we go. Now the important points when we're graphing trig functions, we're going to graph five points and then it's a periodic function, so we're just going to repeat those points over and over and over again. We're going to graph this point, we're going to graph this point, we're going to graph this point, 
this point, and this point. Okay, and then anything outside of that, we would graph them over and over and over again. Okay, so I'm going to graph those important points first. Then I'll quickly go through and graph the other points, just so you can see. But the ones in red are the ones that we actually need. Okay, so there. This one's going to be about there, about there, about there. Okay, and then the graph would actually just repeat itself over and over again. Okay, so it's a rounded top, it's a rounded bottom, and it's going to compete, com just continue on in both directions. There's your sine graph. Again, the five points that are super important are 0, 0, pi by 2, and 1 pi and 0, 3 pi by 2 and negative 1, and then 2 pi and 0. Okay, now that's going to change when we do cos. So what I've actually done is we've erased everything. Now this is how I'd graph a cos graph right from the start. I'm going to actually ignore anything that's not these special points. Okay, because we said that those were the only five that we wanted to graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scratch those out. And you can fill them in if you want. You're going to notice the pattern that we had in the last one. But what we want to see is that cos at 0, so when x is equal to 0, well, that's actually our value of 0 degrees or 0 pi. Well, that's at 1 on my unit circle. When we're at pi by 2, that's moved up to a 90 degree angle, or pi by 2, we're now at 0 for our unit circle. We've moved in to the origin. Okay, and then we're at negative 1, then 0, and then 1 again. So this graph, so if we're graphing this, I'm making it nice and big. I'm going to count every other square as pi by 6. So pi by 6, this would be uh, pi by 3. This would be pi by 2. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's going to be pi, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And notice that I'm actually just counting boxes. I'm not really doing any math in my head. I'm counting boxes, and that's how trig is actually going to turn out. So I'm just going to have the main points on the graph, so every six boxes, and then what I've done is I'm going to graph it. Okay, and you'll notice that it's actually the exact same graph that we just had. All we've done is we've moved over just slightly. Okay, we've actually moved over pi by 2. Okay, all right. So what we want to look at here is when we have a sine function, so the terminal arm ro rotates around with a radius of 1 represents rise in the sine, so the triangle created. So the period of a sine function is 2 pi. The amplitude is 1, the maximum value is 1, the minimum is negative 1, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And that's because it goes on forever. It's a periodic function, it never stops. The range is from negative 1 to 1. Okay, and our five key points I put on that first slide, it's just a little small. Okay, now period here is 2 pi again. Amplitude 1, max is 1, negative 1, domain is the same, range is the same. But what we notice is that our key points have all moved over. So our key points for the coast graph are 0, 1, pi by 2 and 0, pi 
pi and negative 1, 3 pi by 2 and 0, and 2 pi and 1. We've moved to the right. We've shifted this graph all the way to the right, pi by 2. So the sine function and the cosine function are identical curves. Okay, so they're both sinusoidal curves. The cosine function has just been translated 90 degrees or pi by 2 to the right. Okay, well, these are actually, we're going to just get rid of that. So it's moved pi by 2 to the right. We could move it to the left a whole 3 by pi by 2, but we're just going to talk about that. So the sine function looks like this. It starts at 0, 0, ends at 2 pi. We go up to 1, down to, oh, not negative 2, down to negative 1. This one, the cosine function, starts at 1, goes to 2 pi. Oh, good save. That looks horrible. We'll fix that. So they're the exact same graph. They just start in a different spot. This is pi. This is pi. Okay, it's just been moved over. And that's it.